Hi everybody, the law of diminishing marginal returns is a phenomenon that will affect the business in the short run, i.e. when there is at least one fixed factor of production. That's our definition of the short run, a period of time where there is at least one fixed factor of production. Normally two, normally capital and land are fixed for a business in the short run. And therefore the only way to increase output is to increase labor. We assume labor to be our variable factor of production. And then if we actually map numbers here as to what happens when businesses increase labor in the short run, we get a very interesting pattern that can be explained by the law of diminishing returns. And the law of diminishing returns states that in the short run, when variable factors of production, i.e. labor, are added to a stock of fixed factors of production, our land and capital, total or marginal product will initially rise and then fall. That's a very interesting phenomenon and a very interesting thing for a business to know if they're in the short run. What we want to do is illustrate the relationship between employing more workers, so quantity of workers, and the output we get as a return, the returns to labor. We want to map that on diagrams using curves. We want to draw marginal product, average product, total product, and help explain the law of diminishing returns. For us to do that, I put this table here on the left-hand side, and these numbers represent, let's say, um, a business uh, that is making pizzas, yeah? So a pizza making business right here. And let's say that this business is in the short run. They have a fixed amount of capital, let's say three ovens, and they have a fixed amount of land, let's say workspace enough for three workers here. Okay, so this business is in the short run, but the business is employing more and more workers to try and get more pizzas made in a given hour, let's say. And as they employ more workers, let's say these are the total number of pizzas made in an hour. So TP is for total product. We have these numbers, a very interesting relationship. What we want to work out is the marginal product and the average product too. The equation for marginal product is the change in total product divided by the change in the quantity of workers. Just think of marginal as extra. So here the extra product, the extra output, product just means output, the extra output when we employ one more worker. Well, in this case, the change in the quantity of workers is always one. So it's very simply just the change in TP. So the marginal product when we employ the first worker is four. The second worker brings in an extra five. The third worker brings in an extra six. The fourth worker, an extra two. The fifth worker, one. And when we employ the sixth worker, minus three. Very interesting relationship. What about average product? Average product is just total product divided by the quantity of workers. So four divided by one is four. Nine divided by two, 4.5. 15 divided by three is five. 17 divided by four, 4.25. 18 divided by five is 3.6. 15 divided by six is 2.5. So there are numbers there, great. What we can now do is put those numbers onto diagrams. What I want to plot first is marginal product and average product. Now what I could do is do an actual plot, a proper plot here, putting these numbers on the diagram. You can do that if you want. I'm just going to take the rough shape from these numbers. And we can very clearly see, take average product first. Average product rises initially and then it starts to fall. So average product is going to look something like that. That's going to be our average product curve there. And what about marginal product? Marginal product follows the same relationship, but it goes a bit higher, doesn't it? So it goes up and then it starts to fall much more steeply than average product does. So marginal product is gonna look something like that. There's our marginal product there. Brilliant, so we've got two curves, marginal product and average product. And it's very important, guys, when you draw the marginal product curve, it's gotta cut average product at its highest point. This is something I explain later in this playlist, but you've got to draw it so marginal product cuts average product at its highest point. And we have some very interesting shapes and we can explain the shapes. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break down the marginal product curve into two sections. I'm gonna call that section one when the curve is rising, and then when the curve is falling, I'm gonna call that section two. Now let's have a look and see what's going on here. When we employ our first few workers, we can see that marginal product is rising. Each worker, each additional worker is bringing in more output than the last, more pizzas made than the last person. But then, once we employ our fourth worker, we can see that marginal product starts to fall from six to two, then to one, then to minus three. We get into the part of the curve where marginal product is decreasing. 
And that is because the law of diminishing returns sets in when we employ our fourth worker. So let's explain. What's happening in stage one? When we, when we employ our first few workers, our first three workers in particular here, we are seeing increasing returns to labor. Marginal product is rising. Why is that? That is because labor productivity is increasing for two reasons. One, there is specialization taking place. So as we employ the second worker, he's learning from the first worker, absolutely, in how to make pizzas fast. When we employ the third worker, the same thing is happening. They are learning from the previous two workers. They are specializing as well. So maybe one person is applying sauce, one person toppings, one person manning the ovens. Absolutely the case, right? So we have specialization potentially like that. But also there is underutilization of our fixed factors of production. There are excess ovens, right? So maybe when we employ our second worker, the second worker can also use an oven. Our third worker can also use an oven. There are three ovens, so each person can use an oven. There is enough workspace for three workers. So when we employ a second worker, they can use the excess workspace. The third worker can use excess workspace, absolutely. So there is underutilization of fixed factors of production and there is specialization between these workers, which means that labor productivity is rising and therefore marginal product is increasing. But when we employ our fourth worker, marginal product starts to fall. Labor productivity decreases. And that is because our fixed factors of production become a constraint on production. What does that mean? It means very simply, there aren't enough fixed factors of production to take more than three workers here. There aren't enough ovens, there isn't enough workspace. So workers start to get in the way of one another. They start to affect each other's output and therefore labor productivity falls as a result. And we get this relationship. Average product is shaped in exactly the same way for the same reason. So that explains how the law of diminishing returns can affect a firm's marginal product, average product in the short run here, absolutely. What we can also do is look how we can apply this concept to total product. Let's do that here. We can see from our total product numbers that total product will increase, but can you see at a slower rate before it eventually starts to fall, and we can map that on a diagram here. The crucial thing is that total product will be maximized when marginal product is zero. So it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna rise at a slower rate, hit its peak when marginal product is zero, and then fall. That's gonna be our total product curve like that. Absolutely, now why does it peak when marginal product is zero? Why is TP maximized when marginal product is zero? Well, we can see that if marginal product is negative, total product is going to be falling, so that can't be maximizing TP. And if marginal product is positive, then each next worker hide is gonna bring in more output, and therefore total product is gonna keep rising. So as long as marginal product is positive, the next worker is gonna bring in more output, and that's gonna keep increasing TP. So therefore, the only point where total product is maximized is when there is no more marginal product left, i.e. when marginal product is zero. There is no more marginal product to bring in. So that's a crucial rule you have to take away. So that guys covers the law of diminishing returns and you can explain and very clearly see from this definition how when, when we increase workers in the short run, there is gonna be an initial increase before marginal product and total product start to decrease. And that can be explained simply by what's in blue at the bottom here. The law of diminishing returns can also explain the shape of many cost curves in the short run for a firm. So make sure that you watch the next few videos in this playlist to fully understand how the shape of these cost curves can be explained by the law of diminishing returns. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in those videos.